If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is gonna be a Q&A to celebrate my birthday, which Emily is rocking the hat for. Uh, due to popular demand, I brought back <laughs> the toaster, which let me put a toast on, I'll be right back. For anyone who doesn't know, I am French Canadian and there's a joke that people around here tend to grow up only learning yes, no, toaster in English, hence the toaster. And ever since I mentioned that in a q and it's been a thing, I've been having toast and I forgot to do it last couple of times, so now it's back. So I asked you recently to ask me any questions you had and that I would be answering them today on my birthday, so. A question I got quite a few times is people missing my bangs because I tweeted about it recently. I put this screenshot of video and I'm like, I'm almost missing my bangs and like, okay, I am desperately in need of a haircut. Like people were asking what I wanted to do once the pandemic, once I'm vaccinated and everything. And I desperately need a haircut. Like it's been two years and my hair was already long to begin with and I am desperate for one. However, Bangs were so high maintenance, but I miss them. They're cute when they work. Like when they cooperate, they look adorable, but they're very, very high maintenance. I'm pretty lazy with my hair. I tend to go to bed with wet hair and I just deal with deal with it the next morning. But with bangs, you have to blow dry them as soon as you're out of shower because my hair is wavy, not like this. This is not natural. Um, so yeah, I do miss them. I Once I get a proper haircut, I'll probably do like long bangs kind of way we'll see but it's just too long right now it's just too much work to do everything so although i miss them they will not be back for a little while i don't know if i'll ever get uh eh, probably actually i probably will get bangs again in the future what's the last comment that made you block someone that is a good question um someone woke up and chose violence <laughs> or drama Whoop. okay let me go and check what's the last because i tried to save some of them because I keep wanting to do a video about hate comments being used very loosely because oh, I should grab a plate on the couch. It's dangerous. Um, because I do think it would be a fun video to look back at some of the hate comments, but use them as a starting point to discuss some topics like sexism, racism, homophobia, and all that stuff. I'm, I'm kind of never sure because I don't want necessarily to attract drama for no reason in my comment section. I like to keep things as drama free as possible, so I block a ton of people. It can still be fun a little bit, you know, once in a while. Oh God. <laughs> okay, I found it. Um, you ask anyone that does YouTube videos or, I mean, even you, I'm sure, with your Instagram, if it's public, sometimes you just get random comments that are just rude. And you get used to it, to be honest, as sad as it is. And I've had a beauty channel for much longer than a book channel, which you get a lot of stuff on there too. But some days you just have no patience. I block people left and right. I, I do not even think about it anymore. I rarely reply. And whenever I do, 99% of the time I regret it because they don't want a proper answer. Uh, but recently I had someone who left this comment, which at first view for some people might look like a compliment, but it, it's not. Do not tell me that I'm not like other females. Th if you've seen any of my videos, if you're watching this Q&A, you follow me, <laughs> you follow me. And you know, I hate that trope. And then using the word female is just like a good combo. So <laughs> blocked him right away. <laughs> Cause like, no, no. Otherwise I tweeted about that one recently. Um, someone that said that my video about best nonfiction books should have been titled best uh, nonfiction for women because the first two books were about women and written by women. And the third one was The Gift of Fear, which is written by a man. But I think I said that it's, it's, it's especially good for women or like female presenting people. And it's just so silly that that's his conclusion. Uh, so yeah, I get a bunch of stuff like this. Um, it's, it is what it is, to be honest. I, I block people, I, I, I just do. And I know if I did a video about reading hate comments, I would have to block so many people, <laughs> so. Yeah, one day probably though, when I'm feeling contrarian, like he said. Uh, can you tell us something about you that we don't know? Um, actually, I was talking about this with a friend recently. <laughs> okay, one thing that you probably don't know about me is that I am a mix of the luckiest and unluckiest person all in one. It's just like a thing we know that 
everything that can happen will happen to me. It just does. And it can be like silly things. Like usually if you put mon my name to, <laughs> I just started speaking French, mon nom, my name on like any giveaway thing, I usually win like way too often. Doesn't work with the lottery. Not that I've really tried that much, but you know, that didn't work with that. But like little things in my life, I always pretty much win. But I also get weird things happen to me all the time. Um, in the beginning of the pandemic, that is like the weirdest thing this probably has ever happened to me and probably will ever happen to me. Uh, beginning of the pandemic, I had moved here like three months, five months prior or something. And <laughs> one day for no reason at all, my toilet seat turned blue after I sat on it. <laughs> Which like obviously freaked me out. So I googled it, called my dad because obviously, and I was talking to him while googling it. He starts googling it, and the theories were like either I was pregnant, which, <laughs> um, Jesus 2.0, or um, that I was a middle aged man with hormonal issues, which was my dad's favorite possibility, or that what was it that my uh either like body products reacted with the topping on the toilet seat, which seems like the most reasonable possibility. However, I hadn't changed anything. Like I wasn't using anything new and it wasn't like I had just, just moved there. So here, so I have no idea how that happened. So obviously I freaked out, tried to bleach the crap out of my seat because I couldn't go in store to replace it. Plus like, it's not bad. So yeah, now it's like a nice, shade of light yellow. It's, it's wonderful. But yeah, for some reason that happened to me and if I start vlogging like more regularly, you'll see just weird things happen to me a lot. And I've come to just accept it because what else am I going to do? But yeah, <laughs> weird things, lucky and unlucky all in one. It's just, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's my life. <laughs> well, if you ever wanted to know if my health is getting better, which I don't really like talking about my health issues until like there's an answer and things seem to be going better, which I'm so happy. It's not perfect. It's probably going to take a while, but an improvement. I am feeling better. Um, also, I have been having migraines, which let me just swallow this. I don't know if you've seen my last vlog, but um, turns out I was having migraines and I didn't understand why, which turns out I just needed glasses, which <laughs> of course. So uh, if you see me rocking glasses in the upcoming weeks, you'll know why. But yeah, uh, it seems like I'm doing better. I think you can see it in my videos. Like I was literally not doing my hair and makeup anymore. I was just so exhausted and I started doing it again. So that's that's a good sign. <laughs> I feel like it says a lot, like what I'm looking like, the amount of energy I have to look a certain way. When am I doing my one week, one shelf challenge again? I really love that challenge. Like I know that it's not necessarily realistic to read it for a specific like week strictly, but I feel like February is just so perfect for it because it's like four weeks exactly. So it's fun to do it, but I could like do it once in a while, like randomly throughout a month if it's the specific challenge I'm choosing for that month. If people wanted to see it back, I will try to include it more often. I think my issues, my biggest issue is that I have too many ideas, not enough time and energy, but there are so many challenges I want to do, but it's definitely on a rotation. Um, list that one it's specifically coming back for sure where do you wish to travel pretending there is no covid it's gonna be hard to travel after covid to be honest like i obviously would go anywhere literally anywhere at this point because i i cannot see my four walls <laughs> anymore obviously i still will i live in canada so we won't be vaccinated i won't be vaccinated for another couple of probably more months than weeks which but my dad actually got uh, his first vaccine uh, this week. So I'm super, super relieved. Um, obviously, I'm still not seeing him. He's going to come and probably leave like a cake at my door on my birthday or something. <laughs> but otherwise, um, I think I'm still going to wait as, mu as much as possible. But yeah, uh, I don't know. I would literally go anywhere. I think we, we can all relate to that. But realistically, I will probably stick to Canada for a little while because it depends how... It depends how many people get vaccinated in every country. You know, it's not going to disappear overnight. So I'll probably be very careful for a while. Well, people asking me where I'm from. I think my French Canadian <laughs> toast answered the question already. Favorite thing about living alone? Literally everything. Literally everything. Um, It kind of just happened that way because if you remember when I moved here, I had broken up with the person I was with. And by the way, that was my decision. I, I remember at the time I would put music in my background. Like it's just 
copyright free music, which is hard to find. And it would be like a sad song. I would not even realize it. And people would be like, oh, she's probably sad from her breakup. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm doing great. Um, so yes, I moved here alone. It just happened that way. I got lucky and I love it. Like I thought I would be feeling way more sad about, you know, pandemic being stuck here alone, but like I'm doing great. Um, I am my own best friend. That's definitely something I've worked on in the last couple of years and I'm great. And I would probably struggle to live with another person ever again. I do want pets, like any pets, all of the pets really, but it would take me a lot to want to move in with someone which is probably not good, but it is what it is. But yes, I love being able to, like any messes is my mess. And you know, I've, I haven't been feeling good. So like I can, you know, give myself a break some days and be like, it's fine, just do it tomorrow. Or the fact that nobody's eating my food. I am some, I cannot stand someone eating my food. And like, I don't mind if someone like replaces it before I eat it. But like, if you eat it and you just tell me that you don't care, you know, I, it's, it's hard living with people. So uh, I'm very lucky, definitely happy about it. And everything, everything is my favorite thing. What is your favorite guilty pleasure read that you don't really want anyone to know about or that isn't popular, but you love it? I don't feel like I've read that many books that could be seen as guilty pleasure. I would, you know, check out my favorite romance video. I think that's the most appropriate video because I'm not known for loving romance but like I purposely did this video though to just show that it's not that I never like it it's just that generally I don't but I think the best example is the Winner's Curse series would not seem like it's up my alley but it was how do I balance everything between my channels life and everything badly <laughs> very very badly I know it seems like I might have my things like together but I don't. I really, really don't. And I haven't posted anything on my beauty channel in a while because, well, it has been rough the last couple of years after I had my jaw surgery because people are rude on that channel. But generally, it just doesn't affect me. But uh, recently, it's because one of my lights just died and I don't have lighting upstairs in that room. And um, I just couldn't afford to buy another light, which I just did. I need to install it. But yeah, that, that's the only reason I haven't been posting I could have tried to film it here, but it's like not quite the same. And yeah, I balance it badly. That's the real answer. <laughs> How do I style my hair? Let me grab the, the wand actually, give me a second. When I first moved here, I was still using my old Numi wand that I had bought myself like eight years ago. But I think the electricity in this house is just messed up, completely messed up. Like right now my doorbell decided to stop working. And I would probably, you know, need to see an electrician, but pandemic, so. um. <laughs> I had to buy another one and I bought this one on Amazon. I'll link it down below. It's Ellie Hot, E-L-E Hot. Um, and I just used the biggest barrel and I just curl away from my face, except for the front pieces. That's literally all I do. And it was, I think about $40 Canadian. So it wasn't expensive, it works great. My hair for some reason doesn't curl with everything. Sometimes it just doesn't do anything. And I hate the ones with the clip because everything will be straight even if I try to curl it, except that line, hate it. So I always use a big barrel with nothing. So why does Emily not have any roommate? Um, you're forgetting snow globe, Emily. I mean, she's hard to get along with, so. Who's your weird actor that no one knows the name of, but for some reason you love? I think everyone loves him. The first name that comes, first face that comes into my mind is him. I adore him, adore him. And I'm pretty sure everyone does, but like I can never remember his name. Not that I remember the name of many people, but him, I love him. How do I manage to read so much? Well, audiobooks, I think we all know my love for audiobooks. I try to just have a routine. Like I try to read before bed every night, but I'm someone that if I'm too stressed, I don't read. We saw in the beginning of the pandemic, could not read anything, but usually just having a balance and like it's relaxing for me, so. That's a weird thing to say though. I just said that I need to not be stressed to read, but I find it relaxing. But I feel like if you keep picking up good books, it also helps not being in a slump. But yeah, last year was rough. <laughs> Would being in a relationship affect the amount of time you can read? I mean, I would assume so. I feel like I would struggle to date someone that hates reading. Cause like to me, it's such a fun thing to like be at the beach and read a book or like, before bed, you know, you cuddle, read a book, or um, even like rainy day, you cuddle and read a book. Like it just 
sounds very fun to me. So being with someone that can't stand it would be sad. Plus I love recommending books to people. Like I like figuring out what people like and then, oh, this is something you need to try. So I would be sad. I mean, I guess it's not a deal breaker, but I don't watch a ton of TV and like movies and stuff. So I would prefer if someone liked reading, at least not hate it. Would you be interested in reading nonfiction books about beauty or history of fashion and makeup? No, honestly, no. Like I like obviously fashion and makeup. I, you know, have a second channel for it, but not to that extent. Like it's just fun to me. I don't care that deeply, I guess. And do I miss reading in public? Uh, I mean, I could st technically still go to a park and read, I guess. Although like we have pretty strict uh, lockdown here, not as much as other places, but like, I don't read on the bus anymore because I go don't go on a bus, but um, the beach, I can't wait for it to be sunny enough. Well, it's starting to be sunny enough, which I'm so happy, but I need a chair because the chair I had in my backyard is broken. I still need to put it there so the cat can still chill on it, but I need chairs. Once we're allowed to pick up things again, I will definitely pick up some chairs. <laughs> will you ever finish the Count of Monte Cristo? Um, yes, hopefully. I am hoping to probably this summer do a um, reading my pile of shame again throughout the month. Probably not just that, but at least like a specific week that I will only read that and then also Monte Cristo. But I don't know why I don't like I was enjoying it I will have to read like a summary of the first part just to you know refresh my memory with the names and stuff because again I suck with names but um yes I really really want to I'm hoping this is the year but I say that every year so when am I getting pets okay let me tell you when I first moved here I wanted to uh do with the SPCA sometimes you can um take care of a cat until they find a family like foster I don't know what the real term is but foster a cat because the last people that lived here <laughs> cut a hole in the door, which I never changed that door because, and um, <laughs> I wanted to do that. But with the pandemic, they didn't let anyone uh, take care of any of the cats. So I wasn't able to. And I don't think this summer we're going to be allowed yet because again, nobody, well, not everyone will have had the vaccine, so it won't be possible. But I would like to do that because I am not, you know, stable enough to have pets but I would love to like okay ideally I would probably have like two cats no three cats two dogs and a bunch of plants that will probably die uh but we're gonna start with the plants and try to keep them alive but uh yeah I would have all of them literally all of them it's taking me everything not to like steal the cats outside inside my house I won't obviously that to anyone but yeah do I give myself a budget for books um, well, right now I haven't been buying much, but I would just go to library sales, which are really affordable. Back in the day when I started booktube, uh, it was four books for a dollar. And then nonfiction and classics for a dollar. So I obviously went cuckoo during those sales. They increased it uh, a couple times and now, well, last time I went, it was one dollar per book and then nonfiction and classic were two dollars which is still really affordable, but um, I am dying to go. Like once I'm allowed all my vaccine and everything, um, I will go and I will do hauls a lot. We're all very excited. Probably this fall, I will do haul again every month, hopefully. So I don't really give myself a budget because I never go that crazy. Like the most I had bought was probably like $20 in one go kind of thing. I had done one one time was just library sales and it was like $8, but I had like a million books. So yeah. And otherwise I like Value Village, which are buy four books, the fifth one is free. So if you buy the most expensive one, because they still have like a range, it's about $20. So I might just do that once in a while. So like I never go too crazy with books, like price wise. And I do buy sometimes... Uh, brand new copies, but it's kind of rare. Like I'm probably gonna buy the newest um, Skyward. The third one's coming out this fall, like in November, and I will probably buy it because I want the pretty UK edition. So that's probably the most I will spend on the book, you know, all year kind of thing. But yeah, I don't give myself a specific budget. Technically I could allow myself more because of booktube and I still do spend more money than I usually would. But yeah, I haven't spent that much money with books because I'm trying to use my library. One of them is free and then the other one I have to pay uh, $80 a year, which is already, um, but you know, 
it's very practical. So I do like using my library. When are you getting your old cat? <sighs> Seriously, I, I would, I really would. I remember you mentioned that you wanted to do a video with your dad. When's that going to happen? Okay. I was supposed to do that, but then I had jaw surgery. So everything was postponed and now he's not really into it. So if you want to convince him in the comment section, feel free. Um, I've been teasing him about it, but uh, yeah, I kind of got all messed up because of the surgery. So, and now the pandemic, but maybe one day I will convince him, maybe. Do you know BTS? Yes, I do listen sometimes to some K-pop. Yeah, I spent a month in Korea. How could I not have listened to any, you know? Can you speak French? <laughs> I mean, you're gonna have to write me a script because I... <sighs> mon français est vraiment rouillé. C'est rendu que mon père rit de moi. <laughs> Parce que je cherche mes mots. So yeah, I, I do still speak French a little bit, but um, rusty very rusty. My comprehension is perfect. Like, I don't think that's ever going to go away, but I'm just looking for my words. I need to practice, but I haven't spoken to a lot of people in the last year. <laughs> I feel like sometimes I'm trying to film and I can't speak. So do you have a favorite TV show? I'm not huge on TV shows, but like one that I find that the humor works for me is The Good Place, which I have yet to finish yet because it takes me forever to finish TV shows. Um, otherwise, we were talking about K-pop, well, K-drama that I like, because I used to watch a ton with one of my friends, she was obsessed, and one of the ones I liked the most was Oh My Venus, that was a good one, and there was another one that I can't remember of, the name of, but yeah. What was the most misogynistic sci-fi classic you've ever read? They always seem so sexist, and nobody's just talking about it. I will 100% always call it out. I'm actually planning on doing a video reviewing of, like, top 10 whatever classic sci-fi and letting you know how I personally feel about them because you always see a list of like, oh, you must read them, blah, blah, blah. And then you read them and you're like, mm, mm, I don't think that's a must. So you know how someone mentioned hate comments earlier? Let me put on the screen some of the classic ones that I get for classic sci-fi. I got some of these like recently, like uh, on my books I won't read video, I mentioned that I wasn't think I wasn't going to read whatever his name is, the guy that wrote uh, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, Henley, whatever. I know he's on my no-no list because of some of the quotes that I've seen. And on that video, I got someone saying, classic sci-fi is guys written for guys, which of course, of course you would say that. And then what else? I had some recently. Oh, see, so got another one. Uh, come on, it's not fair to say that you won't read anything but from Henley, whatever. He's a top sci-fi writer. The Moon is a Harsh Mistress is a wonderful book. His two top books include the one you just mentioned, A Stranger in a Strange Land. Some of his other books can be controversial for sure. And like, I look up that specific quote, which let me say it. Nine times out of ten, if a girl gets raped, it's partially her own fault. So it's unfair of me to not want to read a book that says that. So yeah, um, classic sci-fi do tend to be quite sexist. I don't think that I have read that many that were super openly sexist like this one because I tend to just avoid them. But I always say like the sprinkle, you know, a sprinkle of racism and sexism always in there, or homophobia. And it's, it's always great. But yeah, I'm planning on doing that video. I'm just scared of the comment section. Once again, that will attract all of these people and... Ugh. I don't know, I just don't really want to attract these kind of people on my channel because I will have to block them and I just... Plus, they're the kind of people that tend to like over-sexualize me, which I hate. Any French Canadian writer that you would recommend? I don't feel like I've read that many. Like, I, I will get people asking me like, oh, what books in French do you recommend? And I'm like, I don't read books in French. I'm not really the person to ask. It's not that I like hate French or French Canadian. It's just that I have read a lot in high school but like they were the classic ones, so like nobody's enjoying that, are they? Like Gabriel Roy, no thank you. Like so not my cup of tea. By the way, I'm announcing that I am finally starting a bookstagram, I know. I'm probably gonna start slow and then start doing it more consistently. It was difficult because my place was such a mess because I had just moved before the pandemic, so I hadn't had a chance to buy anything in here. Uh, I got a couch like, what, eight months into living here? So uh, I'm finally getting a few things and I will hopefully be able to start actually taking pretty pictures for 
uh, Instagram. So yes, you have that to look forward to. I will link it down below. It's books with Emily Fox as everything else and yeah i hope to see you there so that's gonna be it for today's video i hope you enjoyed this q a uh i don't know if it was long or not because it seemed like it took a while because my camera had to shut down and start again so that means over 30 minutes um i hope you enjoyed this video thumbs up subscribe i will link down below like i said my instagram for anyone interested because i think i'm gonna do a like um reading your assumptions about me or something soon so uh definitely follow me there so you can actually participate in it so that's it i will be putting more videos on the screen that i recommend you check out and i will see you in my next video upcoming soon bye